Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please support my channel by contributing to my Patreon account so that I can continue making the audiobook series. Is the Bible God's Word? Start of Chapter 3 The Multiple Bible Versions It will now be easy for us to analyze a Christian's claim about his holy book. Separating the wheat from chaff Before we scrutinize the various versions, let us clarify our own belief regarding the books of God. When we say that we believe in the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil and the Qur'an, what do we really mean? We already know that the Holy Qur'an is the infallible word of God, revealed to our Holy Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, word for word, through the agency of the Archangel Jibreel alayhi salam, known as Gabriel in English, and perfectly preserved and protected from human tampering for the past 1400 years. Even hostile critics of Islam have grudgingly vouched for the purity of the Holy Qur'an. There is probably in the world no other book which has remained 12 centuries, now 14 plus, with so pure a text. Sir William Muir The Torah we Muslims believe in is not the Torah of the Jews and the Christians, though the words, one Arabic, the other Hebrew, are the same. We believe that whatever the Holy Prophet Moses salam, preached to his people was the revelation from God Almighty. But that Moses was not the author of those books attributed to him by the Jews and the Christians. Likewise, we believe that the Zabur was the revelation of God granted to Hazrat Dawud salam, but that the present Psalms associated with his name are not that revelation. The Christians themselves do not insist that David is the sole author of his Psalms. What about the Injil? Injil means the gospel or good news which Jesus Christ preached during his short ministry. The gospel writers often mention Jesus going about and preaching the gospel, the Injil. 1. And Jesus went, preaching the gospel and healing every disease among the people. Holy Bible, Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35. 2. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the Gospels, the same shall save it. Holy Bible, Mark, chapter 8, verse 35. 3. Preach the Gospel, Holy Bible, Luke, chapter 20, verse 1. The gospel is a frequently used word, but what gospel did Jesus preach? Of the 27 books of the New Testament, only a small fraction can be accepted as the words of Jesus. The Christians post about the gospels according to St. Matthew, according to St. Mark, according to St. Luke, and according to St. John. But there is not a single gospel according to St. Jesus himself. We sincerely believe that everything Christ salam, preached was from God. That was the Injil, the good news and the guidance of God for the children of Israel. In his lifetime, Jesus never wrote a single word, nor did he instruct anyone to do so. What passes off as the Gospels today are the works of anonymous hands. The question before us is, do you accept that the Bible is God's word? The question is really in the form of a challenge. The questioner is not simply seeking enlightenment. The question is posed in the spirit of a debate. We have every right to demand in a similar vein, which Bible are you talking about? We may ask. Why? There is only one Bible, he mutters. The Catholic Bible Holding the Douay, Roman Catholic version of the Bible aloft in my hand, I ask, Do you accept this Bible as the word of God? 
for reasons best known to themselves. The Catholic Truth Society have published their version of the Bible in a very short, stumpy form. This version is a very odd proportion of the numerous versions in the market today. The Christian questioner is taken aback. What Bible is that? he asks. Why, I thought you said that there was only one Bible, I remind him. Yes, he murmurs hesitantly. But what version is that? Why would that make any difference? I inquire. Of course it does, and the professional preacher knows that it does. He is only bluffing with his one Bible claim. The Roman Catholic Bible was published at Reims in 1582, from Jerome's Latin Vulgate and reproduced at Douai in 1609. As such, the RCV, Roman Catholic Version, is the oldest version that one can still buy today. Despite its antiquity, the whole of the Protestant world, including the cults, condemn the RCV because it contains seven extra books, which they contemptuously refer to as the Apocrypha. That is of doubtful authority. Notwithstanding the dire warning contained in the Apocalypse, which is the last book in the RCV, renamed as Revelation by the Protestants, it is revealed, If any man shall add to these things or delete, God shall add unto him the plagues written in this book. Holy Bible, Revelation, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. But who cares? They do not really believe. The Protestants have bravely expunged seven whole books from their Book of God. The outcasts are the Book of Judith, the Book of Tobias, the Book of Baruch, the Book of Esther, etc. The Protestant Bible So Winston Churchill has some pertinent things to say about the authorized version of the Protestant Bible which is also widely known as the King James Version, KJV. The authorized version of the Bible was published in 1611 by the will and command of His Majesty King James I, whose name it bears still today. The Roman Catholics, believing as they do that the Protestants have mutilated the Book of God, are yet aiding and abetting the Protestant crime by forcing their native converts to purchase the authorized version of the Bible which is the only Bible available in some 1500 languages of the lesser developed nations of the world. The Roman Catholics milk their cows, but the feeding is left to the Protestants. The overwhelming majority of Christians, both Catholics and Protestant, use the authorized AV or the King James Version, KJV, as it is alternatively called. Glowing Tributes first published as Sir Winston says in 1611 and then revised in 1881 RV and now re-revised and brought up to date as the revised standard version RSV 1952 and now again re-re-revised in 1971 still RSV for short. Let us see what opinion Christendom has of this most revised Bible, the RSV. 1. The finest version which has been produced in the present century. Church of England newspaper. 2. A completely fresh translation by scholars of the highest eminence. Times Literary Supplement. 3. The well-loved characteristics of the authorized version combined with the new accuracy of translation. Life and work. 4. The most accurate and close rendering of the original, the Times. The publishers, Collins themselves, in their notes on the Bible at the end of their production, say on page 10, This Bible, RSV, is the product of 32 scholars, assisted by an advisory committee representing 50 cooperating denominations. Why all this boasting? To make the gullible public buy their product? All these testimonies convince the purchaser that he is backing the right horse, while the purchaser little suspecting that he is being taken for a ride. The World's Best Seller 
But what about the authorized version of the Bible, A.V., the world's bestseller? These revisers, all good salesmen, have some very pretty things to say about it. However, their page 3, paragraph 6 of the preface of the RSV reads, The King James Version, alternative description of A.V., has with good reason been termed the noblest monument of English prose. Its revisers in 1881 expressed admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its happy turns of expression, the music of its cadences, and the felicities of its rhythm. It entered, as no other book has, into the making of the personal character and the public institutions of the English-speaking peoples. We owe to it an incalculable debt. Can you, dear reader, imagine a more magnificent tribute being paid to the book of books than the above? I, for one, cannot. Let the believing Christian now steal himself for the unkindest blow of all from his own beloved lawyers of religion. For in the very same breath they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. This is straight from the horse's mouth, that is, the orthodox Christian scholars of the highest eminence. Another galaxy of doctors of divinity are now required to produce an encyclopedia, explaining the cause of those grave and serious defects in their holy writ and their reasons for eliminating them. End of chapter 3